This is The Top, where I interview entrepreneurs who are number one or number two in their industry in terms of revenue or customer base. You'll learn how much revenue they're making, what their marketing funnel looks like, and how many customers they have. I'm now at $20,000 per talk. Five and six million. He is hell-bent on global domination. We just broke our 100,000 unit soul mark. And I'm your host, Nathan Latka. Okay, Top Tribe, this week's winner of the 100 bucks that I give away every Monday is Kim Dust. She's in the entertainment industry and is currently working a full-time day job and doing her side hustle on the side. Kim, congrats. For you, is a chance to win 100 bucks every Monday. Simply subscribe to the podcast on iTunes now and then text the word Nathan to 33444 to officially enter. Again, text the word Nathan to 33444 after you subscribe. Guys, if you want an easy tool to use to book your meetings back to back, to batch your calls, to make sure people actually show up when they schedule, you want to use Acuity Scheduling. It's what I use for my podcast interviews at NathanLatka.com forward slash schedule. I'll tell you more about how I use it later on in the episode. Nathan Latka here. This is episode 529. Coming up tomorrow morning, you're going to learn from Sean Livermore and why he shut down a business that did $2 million bucks in revenue. It's a tough decision. You'll see why he had to do it. Top Drive, Nathan Latka here. Our guest today is Guy Suter, and he runs Notion.ai, where his mission is to improve how people communicate using artificial intelligence. Previously, he co-founded BitLeap and led the product to the world's top-selling backup alliance after, uh, sorry, appliance after 2008 acquisition by Barracuda. His startup adventure has touched data backup, cloud storage, group chat, file sharing with copy.com, and CRM with nutshell.com. Guy, are you ready to take us to the top? <laughs> I'm ready, Nathan. Thanks. All right. So you, those are some big names you kind of worked with. What came, was it, was it, was it file sharing first, then nutshell, then notion.ai? What's the order? Uh, it was a pretty tangled path, actually. You no, know, we, uh, we had a couple, you know, my co-founder and I had a couple things going on in college and then we ended up starting a data backup company. That was our first thing. Um, and that, that moved into BitLeap and, and sort of turned into a, a business kind of SMB cloud based, uh, backup appliance. Uh, where we would back up data, you know, both locally and offsite. Uh, and then that moved into Barracuda. And then all the other stuff kind of happened, you know, simultaneously in parallel with, with everything we were doing. Got it. Okay, very good. So tell us, uh, bring us forward today. Tell us what Notion.ai does and how you generate revenue. Yeah, well, we, we're actually pre-revenue, so we don't have, we haven't made, you know, our first dollar of revenue yet and probably won't for a while yet. Um, but I can kind of talk about our plans God, there you're killing point, me. So. All right, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that yeah, later. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Um, but, you know, we, we started Notion uh, roughly three years ago. We've been working very hard and, you know, without a whole lot of publicity on sort of the tech, technical end of building an intelligence layer that sits on top of communications. We have sort of a core belief that uh, digital communications has become unwieldy and, and a huge problem for everyone. And the only way out of it uh, is going to be have, you know, this personal AI that can help us prioritize it, focus on the right things. Uh, get the most value out of, you know, thousands of weak connections that we have, those sorts of things. And so we're trying to build the uh, domain specific knowledge around that so that we can, can stand up a platform in, in many different ways and many different products, ultimately, uh, that will help people do what they do a lot better. And and so walk me through, when did you launch the company? Uh, so we actually just launched about a month ago. Uh, that was our first public announcement ever. Um, we got to the point where, you know, we have really believe that what we've built out the sort of the, the back end uh, intelligence layer of what we've got is very useful at this point. Uh, we've developed some initial products. We have both an iOS app and an Android app that are, you know, email clients on the front end um, that use a lot of the technology on the back end. We also have a, a skill with Alexa where you can actually talk to your email. Um, and so really, I really defined email as sort of our starting point, like, like you know, this idea that digital communications, regardless of channel is sort of problematic and we're going to need to make it a lot more efficient. Um, wanted to have a place where we can meet people with where they're at today. And we're all in email all the time. And that's where we have sort of the most problems. Um, so we developed this front end app that, that takes advantage of less technology to, to do that better. So I, we're going to lose. So I have to, we're going to, we'll lose listeners right now. If I don't ask this question, because guys, guys, the real deal, I, I, I looked up the company beforehand and I know they're pre-revenue, but, but guy, we just have to put out some word porn for a second real quick to hold people through the rest of the lessons you're going to teach us. How much capital have you guys raised so far? Uh, so we're right around 10 million uh, uh, early stage capital in. Um, yep. Yeah. 
So, and then follow up on that. So people are going, wait, how did this guy raise $10 million with no revenue? Uh, walk us through, walk us <laughs> yeah, through those kinds of conversations. Email, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Walk yeah, us through I some mean, of those conversations. Yeah. There's a number of things. I mean, you know, I, I, I've started a lot of SaaS companies, you know, and B2B SaaS companies. So that's where, you know, I've got sort of a lot of my background and experience. Um, you talk about and, nutshell and copy or what? Yeah. Yeah. Bit leap. And then into building the business of Barracuda, which was very much a B2B kind of enterprise uh, product and nutshell, certainly, which is B2B. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I've got a lot of experience in sort of building the, the business on that end of things. Um, when we, we took a look at Notion, we really believed pretty strongly that um, the, the opportunity for building this intelligence layer and, and sitting on top of communications and having a technology that can help people, you know, sort of transformatively get more out of all the communication they're having with everybody uh, was going to be a very long horizon. And there's lots of revenue opportunities and monetization potential. And we've certainly got, you know, plenty, plenty of plans around that. Um, but we name, name, name one or two of those op- opportunities yeah, down the line. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the first one that we'll probably do first, you know, is probably like, you know, maybe not 2017, maybe by the end of 2017 or 2018, uh, is trying, starting to extend sort of what we can do with this intelligence layer, you know, for teams. Right. So if you think about the way that we're and I, you know, obviously I'm pretty close to CRM, right. You've got sort of two ends of the stack in communication. You've got the transactional messages that are actually happening, whether it's, you know, like on Skype, you know, like we're on now, or if it's uh, email messages going back and forth or Slack messages or whatever, you sort of got these transactional messages where all the, the actual communications happening. And then you go way up in that stack and eventually you get to something like a CRM or an ERP or a vendor management system, donor management system, those sort of things. Right. And, you know, the, the problem that I see in the gap there is that we've got all this great data about the meaning of our relationships and what's going on down here at the message layer. Um, but a lot of times, like we don't start tracking or you know having any kind of assistance in managing those those people that we're interacting with until years go by. You might know somebody for years before you put them in you know, as a lead in your CRM or something, right? Uh, and so there's a, there's a big missing you know opportunity there. I think uh, for us individually, certainly, but it's definitely for teams. You can imagine, you know, if you were able to take your team and say, hey, everybody we know, we can look at and know how we know you know them together. We can tag them. We can talk about them. Um, we can do some, those sort of things um, and, and have an intelligence behind that that's data driven. Uh, we think that there's some pretty compelling stuff there. So that's probably the first foray. Uh, but, you know, longer term, uh, we see we see lots of opportunities for for doing things that are kind of consistent with our core values as a company, which is sort of like not ad tech. <laughs> yeah. well, why hasn't anyone like really taken off in this space? I mean, you look at companies like Conspire, right? Great yeah. people backing them in theory sounded great. And. Quite frankly, I talked to the CEO, the pitch sounded almost identical to what you just articulated, but you all have kind of different skill sets and different things and you're doing, you know, you're going to execute it differently. Why hasn't anyone really dominated this space yet? Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a great question. I mean, I think that there's a huge barrier to air entry really to, to do this right, right? Because you've, you've got to have a team that has some credibility that, you know, can, can bring some investors and folks that can have a long view horizon. You know, most early stage capital for small startup teams has a pretty short horizon on it. Um, you've got to build a lot of different teams out. You know, we've got a, an engineering team that has a cloud team, has an AI team, has an Android team, has an iOS team, has a desktop team. You know, it's just like it's, it's a lot of people. Right. And and I think that's just and by its very nature hard. And then you've got to figure out a way to earn the right to exist in people's lives today. Right. And that's sort of where we focused. And that's why we, we, we really identified email as, hey, this is the thing that we all do. It's mission critical for so many of us. We spend hours a day on it. It's a total pain in the butt. Um, and we all, we all suffer from these sort of same problems. And it's insane that we haven't ever figured out a way to do it better. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that, you know, you mentioned Conspire. And there, I mean, there's a number of companies that are sort of like trying to create another category. Name um, a few of those us, real really, quick. Yeah, I mean, I, Conspire is the biggest one that comes to my head. Um, a LinkedIn in a way, I think, you know, because it's like a whole nother app that you have to go to and they've tried to come down and get into messaging. But I think at the end of the day, there's just not room for a third thing. You know, like I've got the, the apps that I go to to message with people. I've got my CRM and sort of my business stack applications. Do I really have room in my life for something in the middle? Um, and I'm not sure I do personally. Right. So that's where I started getting really excited about the idea that, hey, the tool that I'm using to actually transact these messages can kind of start scaling up in the value that it's that it's offering me. And there's another benefit to that, too, right? Because if, if the tool that you're using to do the messaging is also the thing that's aware of what messages are important to you or what they mean or, you know, people that you might want to know, uh, it can kind of start nudging you into the right direction. Like maybe you should reply to this person or maybe you shouldn't say that or maybe you should say this or maybe you should send it at this time. Right. 
Um, yep. And so th- it's, it's a very it, it's a very symbiotic kind of relationship if you're right there where the transaction is actually happening. So that's kind of like the idea side of this equation, right? What will you do and how you're different than, say, a Conspire or a LinkedIn? But your kind of go-to-market strategy, it sounds like, is kind of go where people are already spending a lot of time, which is email. And it sounds like you mentioned Android and iPhone. So on the other side of this, you're going to be competing with folks, I guess, like Polymail, right? YC back, those kinds of guys. How do you, if someone's looking at, do I download Notion or do I download download Polymail? Why would they choose Notion? Yeah, well, I mean, I I certainly don't look at it as an either or. I mean, I, I... Talk to the folks at Polymail. I think they're great. They're a great team, making an awesome product. I think you know the folks at Google that put out Inbox have done some really interesting things. It's like our goal is not to make the best email app in the world. You know, I think we we are in an email app platform because we need to meet people where they're at. We need to add value to to exist and have have the right to bring users on and learn from them and figure out how to build this thing that we sort of have this long view for. Um, but you know, I think we certainly have features that are just. Dis- you know, differentiated, nobody else has, right? That that offer a set of value that's different than here's my airline tickets or here's my shipping notifications, right? Uh, we're much more people centric. We're much more focused on the relationships and what's important to you based on the meaning of the message and what, you know, getting, making sure the right things stay on your radar, those sort of things. Um, but, you know, it's email. I mean, you can have as many email apps as you want. And I don't think it's Do people? a- I see. Yeah. That's the thing I always um, wonder about. Uh, that's the yeah. answer. That's the yeah. answer I always get. I I, I choose uh-huh. and I look at people's iPhone screens all the time and their desktop. I think people choose one and kind of stick with it. I mean, may, look, prove me wrong. I could be totally wrong here. I'm going totally off gut. Um, but yeah, maybe look, maybe you're right. It's, t- t- prove me wrong with numbers. How are you guys doing in terms of downloads? You just launched recently. How many folks have downloaded the apps? Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just to close off on that point. I mean, one of the things that's been interesting to us is you know, because of sort of this, this perspective that we've got and where we're headed with the company, I think there's a lot of people that download the app, play with it, use it for certain things and not necessarily other things. Uh-huh. Um, and even some people kind of keep it around because they're interested to see where it goes. And maybe for some yeah. reason or another, they, they, they don't commit to changing over or whatever. Um, so we're, we're seeing some really interesting behaviors on that front. Um, one of the things that we do is just like help you clean up your inbox really, really, really fast. And so I know for a fact, we have a lot of users that they use Notion first thing in the morning and they use some other app throughout the day. Um, Interesting. That's a win. That's not, you know, that's not a terrible thing Uh, in terms of, you know, in terms of traction, you know, we're, we're not quite at the stage where like what our aim is to go get millions and millions of users as fast as possible. We're at the stage where we want to get enough signal from the users that we're bringing in that we're sort of validating the, the, you know, proof points that we've got and that we're building the right stuff and we're learning from them. And since launch, we have learned an enormous amount. Uh, and have, you know, have a lot of work to do out of that, that learning. It's been great. Our users are incredibly uh, vocal. Um, so, so how, really, many really folks, how many folks have downloaded it? I just, just to get a sense of the cohort you're using um, out of mind signals from. Yeah, we, you know, we went through a pretty long process up front where we had a few thousand people in sort of our private beta period. And okay. since then, we've had tens of thousands of people come in, you know, so let's say, you know, less than a million, but, you know, more than 10,000, so 10, 000, tens of thousands um, our goal right now is to be like hundreds a day, right? We want, we want to be in a place where we're attracting hundreds of new fresh eyeballs a day that are seeing the latest, greatest, whatever we have, and then understanding how they're reacting to that and listening to their feedback. Um, we're doing better than that. Um, and I don't think we're growing too fast quite yet, but we're, we're last month, we were closer to the order of 10 X that. So closer to a thousand than hundreds. Um, you mean you're adding so a thousand, feeling- a thousand people downloading the app per day or a thousand per month? Yeah, in the last month, we were, we were closer to that kind of thousand number, which, you know, is is exceeding sort of like where per we wanted to be right month. out of the gate. Oh, per day, per day. Got it, per day. Okay, got it. Very good. That's great. Um, okay, so uh, take us to some other things, things real quick before we wrap up. You mentioned kind of the, the investments you're having to make in people here to get this thing off the ground. A big barrier to entry. What's your team size currently? Um, 20 few. Uh, so about 20, 22, 23, something like that. Okay, where are you guys based? We're in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Oh, very good. Interesting. Tell why'd you choose there? Um, and, and it's really hard to do if you have a consumer first kind of long view strategy, right? So we was either obviously moved to the valley or, or stay here. We had moved our company to Ann Arbor when we were acquired by Barracuda because we, we were really attracted to the engineering talent that's available in, in Michigan, especially from University of Michigan, but Michigan State, Michigan Tech as well. Uh-huh. And we're able to build up the largest tech employer in downtown Ann Arbor while we were at Barracuda and, and had a you know, phenomenal engineering presence here. And so when we, we went to go start Notion, you know, of course, moving to the value is sort of the most automatic thing, especially if you want to do something in the consumer space. Um, but for us, uh, we really saw that we had a competitive advantage on building a talented team um, and doing that, you know, efficiently and doing it with people that were going to be really excited about the mission and, and really, you know, happy to be able to work in Michigan and, and do this kind of startup. 
And so for us, the litmus test was, hey, can we get a top tier VC in on day one? Uh, that's going to get us the kind of network and visibility and resources that we need to be able to do something that's ambitious from Michigan. If we can, great, we'll do it here because we think that will be better. Uh, if not, I guess we'll have to go to the Valley. So we were lucky. Right. And we were able to, uh, so Excel was actually, you know, first money in with us. Okay. Um, uh, we got a partner there, Samir Gandhi, that's been super, super supportive. Uh, and we're able, you know, on the financing side here, you know, the last couple of years, able to kind of navigate to an absolute idyllic scenario uh, with with Excel kind of being that the top tier brand in uh, VCN. Uh, and then uh, a guy named Mark Kwame on our board uh, at Drive Capital, who was an ex Sequoia partner that just set up a new fund here in Columbus a, a few oh, years wow. ago. Uh, and Mark was actually the original investor from Sequoia that invested in LinkedIn when they were less employees than we are now. Um, and so we've got somebody on our board that was on LinkedIn's board for like eight years. And he's, his experience that he's brought to the company is just phenomenal. That's fantastic. Very cool. Well, hey, guy, people are going to want to follow you as you keep building this with your founders. Where's the best place for them to follow you online? Yeah, definitely Twitter, uh, at Guy Suter, Q-Y-S-U-T-E-R. All right, guys, I talked about this earlier, but I schedule, like, so many meetings, it would blow your mind. I mean, all my podcast interviews, right, hundreds of entrepreneurs I talk to monthly, I schedule. And you know what? I do it so efficiently. I get them all to agree to my calendar, so all the calls are back-to-back-to-back. That means I'm not switching in between tasks all day long. I get them to batch so that I can be very efficient. It's so critical. And I use a tool called Acuity Scheduling to do this at NathanLacka.com forward slash schedule. It eliminates the back and forth between me and people I'm trying to meet with. It makes it very simple. And most importantly, they help me keep my no-show rate very low because they send out reminders. Helps you look very professional. So go to NathanLacka.com forward slash schedule to sign up and you get a great deal you know you guys know this i hit people hard i make great deals and gavin the ceo has given us a great deal if you sign up like normal people okay on their website you only get a 14 day free trial if you use my link nathanmica.com forward slash schedule you get 45 days free okay it's the best it's free go to nathanmica.com forward slash schedule right now to sign up and i'll see you there all right, Top Tribe, we will link to that in the show notes. So you have it. That will be at NathanLacka.com forward slash the top 529. Again, forward slash the top 529. All right, guys, let's wrap up with the famous five. These are one-word answers. You ready? Oh, boy. Okay. All right, number one, what's your favorite business book? Uh, Brand New World by Scott Bedbury. Okay, number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Uh, that is a good question. Um, you know, there, there, one historic Milton Hershey, I'm a Pennsylvania guy and I love the enduring brand that, that he put together. Um, also really interested in Jay Simmons at Atlassian. I think the revenue model that they went public with is awesome. Which was what? Uh, very linearity. <laughs> like, you know, they don't depend on quarterly sales, uh, normal kind of like quarterly sales, uh, traction at all. So they focus, you know, four to five quarters out instead of next quarter. It's awesome. Love that. Number three is their favorite online tool you have like top towel. Mm, favorite one that's really tough i am gonna give a shout out to picasso uh a guy named noah there that started it doing uh neural network uh, basically art um where you can you know, kind of mix some mix and match stuff and make some really really cool stuff number four yes or no do you get eight hours of sleep every night <laughs> no <laughs> what's your situation married single you have kids I got two awesome kids and married. Uh, so a seven year old boy, a three year old girl. Um, wow. And I, I work really hard at trying not to measure my output by the number of keystrokes. Right. That's so good. Uh, That's yeah. Good. Now, and now with kids, it's, it's about, okay. How do I be present there? But also realize that I'm sort of always working. Right. And how old are you guy? Uh, 37. Okay. So last question, take us back 17 years. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Oh, geez. You know, I, the, the first most impactful thing would probably be how early stage capital works. Uh, the next things would be, you know, it's okay to have a little bit more patience. Sometimes doing something awesome takes time. And then I think influence management has been the biggest learning experience in my career. Right. I think my, my sort of my first, my first foray as being a CEO, I was sort of just the boss and, you know, like told everybody what to do and thought I had great ideas, but I didn't cultivate sort of, uh, buy-in and influence as much as I do now. I spend a lot of time on culture and, and you know, trying to make sure good ideas come from everywhere and everybody's, everybody's really participating in the plan. 
Well, top tribe, there you have it. Have more patience. Take your time and really focus on building culture and influence. Get your team on board. From a guy building Notion.ai, they've raised 10 million bucks. They have between 10,000 or tens of thousands of users, adding over a thousand per day last month across their 22 team members, all based up there in Ann Arbor, Michigan, looking to really change communication, starting with messaging inside of emails. Guy, thanks for taking us to the top. Awesome. Thanks, Nathan. If you enjoyed Guy today, go back and listen to Nathan yesterday. Nathan grew can convert kit from nothing to 480 grand in monthly recurring revenue by helping 10,000 professional bloggers grow their email list. Okay, Top Tribe, I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. And don't forget, before you listen to any other episodes, subscribe on iTunes right now for your chance to win 100 bucks every Monday. 